Um, my name is Melissa Clement. I'm with Nevada Right to Life. I um, advocate for life from a conception to natural death. Um, I'm, there are lots of service organizations like the Crisis Pregnancy Centers who do heroic work helping women every single day. My job is kind of like the Air Force for those folks. Um, I, I, I take the long, the long view, and so I'm, I'm in the education sphere and I'm very much in the political sphere. So I lobby 120 days every other year. And, um, and so I, I, you know, I'm, not, I'm not the most boastful person, but I think there's probably nobody in the state of Nevada that understands question six like I do, just because I've been doing this for a very long time. Um, I am going to go through a very fast presentation. Uh, this could be 30 minutes, it can be 10 minutes, but I'm going to do it in five to seven. Um, question six is about abortion. So it's important to, to start with the very basic facts of what is abortion? Abortion is the willful destruction of a living and newborn baby in her mother's womb. Abortion is not miscarriage care. It's not a topic. Uh, pregnancy treatment, and it really, really, really shouldn't be birth control. We need to, you know, why are we talking about this? This is my first question. Why are we even discussing question six? Because in Nevada, abortion is available for any reason or no reason, up to 24 weeks, which is six months. Any reason or no reason, up to six months. The only requirement is it must be done by a licensed physician. After 24 weeks, in the case where a woman is facing a health or life challenge, she can still get an abortion. It just must be done in a licensed hospital with a licensed physician. And that, for a very important reason, because as a woman goes further into her pregnancy, it is more risky for her to get, a, a, get an abortion because it, it goes from simpler procedures to actually, and I'm sorry to say this, but dismembering that baby piece by piece and pulling those pieces out and making sure those pieces are, are, are out of the womb. It's also, in Nevada, we are actually a fairly humane people, and we, a long time ago, decided that a baby that is born alive in, a, in an abortion deserves the very basic humane treatment of life-saving medical care, and that cannot happen outside of a hospital. So that, that's the basis of our law. It's NRS 442.250, and it was subject to referenda in 1990. And it won. You know, and a referendum is basically a ballot question where everybody says, I like this law or I don't like this law. If I don't like this law and that wins, then that, that law is removed from a uh, statute. If, I, if it wins, like this particular NRS won, that means it can never be changed except by a vote of the people. So no legislature, no legislator, no U.S. senator, no governor, no county commissioner, nobody can change the basis of 24 weeks. No one. And it, it takes, like I said, a vote of the people. And so, so now we have a vote of the people in question six. I myself, I'm very pro-life. Every life is sacred. Every life is a um, endless possibility that is, and, and it is our greatest human capital and potential. So that's me, and I'm super pro-life. And I'm just going to stop and think about that. Yes, I am very polite. I, I just completely lost the plot. Um, so this particular law is extreme in my opinion because at six months, where we, where we have decided viability as to that baby is, um, is pretty far along. That baby is kicking, that baby is moving, that baby can live outside the womb with a little extra time in an incubator. We're talking a living, breathing, little tiny about and so I think six months is a little too far, a lot too far. Um, but you know, unfortunately, Nevada was for reproductive freedom. The Democrat Party, Jackie Rosen, and um, however you say her first name, Harris, have all decided that's not far enough. And so they have they have presented question six. 
and it is a, and this will amend our constitution, and I'm gonna read just a little bit of, of the um, amendment. All individuals shall have a fundamental right to abortion performed or administered by a qualified healthcare practitioner until fetal viability or when needed to protect the life or health. Now, I'm gonna just stop right there for one second. The health of the mother. The life of the mother is, we all understand that. Mom is, um, has got a condition where um, her life is threatened. She may die if, if something doesn't happen. The health of the mother is something completely different. And that was, that was decided back in the 70s along with Roe v. Wade. Health of the mother can be anything, and it can be transitory. It can be, um, it can be physical, it can be mental, it can be financial. So I'm having a bad fair day, I don't have money in my checkbook. Uh, that can be a reason to, to get an abortion. Now, I'm not saying that that's always the case, but you just need to understand that that is a pretty big loophole. Um, Life or health of the pregnant patient without interference from the state or its political subdivisions. Again, I've got to stop for a second. You know what's not listed in this question? A couple of very important words. Mother, woman, girl, female. The, none of that is in question six. Which, you know, actually makes a lot of sense because question six does not help women. But I'm just... Uh, Illegal. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, without interference from state or political subdivisions. So that means that a legislature or a county commission cannot come in and say, we require a level of, of health and safety and sanitary conditions for any location that's going to provide abortions. Because this is a fundamental right. So you can't, you can't do things that are going to cause that fundamental right to be delayed in any way. Um, uh, let's see. I, now I could read a little bit more, but the one thing this is the this is the big deal. Fetal viability means point in pregnancy when, in the professional judgment of the patient's treating healthcare practitioner, we're going to get back to that word in a second. There is a significant likelihood of the fetus sustained survival outside the uterus without the application of extraordinary medical measures. Now, I have three kids, and my oldest was born with the, with the umbilical cord wrapped around his neck. He had, to be, he had to be taken out of me and rushed down to um, the ICU, and they had to work on it for a little bit. Now, you wouldn't know that at 29. You wouldn't know that. Um, that's extraordinary medical measures, but you know what else is? That little grain squishy bowl that they put with the side a child's nose or down their throat if they happen to ingest meconium or something like that. There will be no requirement for a hospital for a late-term abortion after this amendment goes in. So therefore, the level of fetal viability or what, what this defines fetal viability is a much higher standard in a hospital than it is in a back alley abortion location. So on um, healthcare practitioner, as I mentioned, doctor is required currently. Healthcare practitioner is the new term. And that is a term that is defined in the matter of by statute as a whole lot of things, some of which are licensed nurse, dentist, optometrist, um, doctor of oriental medicine, or other person whose principal occupation is the provision of services for health. That can be a lot of things, and a lot of, a lot of which are not going to have the level of um, training as a, as a trained OBGYN. I think women deserve at least that. Question six, the question we will see on your ballot, um, should the Nevada Constitution, and it goes, it goes on and on. It's fairly clear. It's fairly clear we're talking about abortion. It's fairly clear healthcare professionals write a warrant. And the last eight words or six words, at any point in the pregnancy. So, I mean, you just need, people need to read the question, maybe read the amendment, and really there's no other vote except no. Um, and then I'm at uh, one more slide, and then I, I, I won't, I'll, I'll quit to uh, bore you guys to death. What are the effects of question six? If I vote no, if I vote no, the current law remains, which means abortion is available up to six months for any reason or no reason. It must be done by a licensed physician. Parental involvement can be required. I didn't, I didn't dis, uh, discuss that, but that's a very big point. Parental involvement can be required. I think an underage girl at 12, 13 years old 
should have to have a parent at least notified, if not provide consent, before she gets a, a medical procedure that could impact her for the rest of her life. That could be that could be that she might be dragged to by a child sex trafficker to hide his crimes. So I think that's important. Health and safety regulations remain intact. intact. And here's the important thing. No woman is punished for an abortion currently, ever. None, not at all. If question six passes, they're um, what we're actually voting on is we're trying to muster abortions up to birth for any reason or no reason. Um, anybody and everybody can pretty much do it. No parental involvement ever. That closes the door. State and local government cannot regulate for health and safety, and women are punished by unqualified practitioners in unsanitary locations, and they have no, no ability to, to ask for anything. 84% um, of people don't know what our law is currently. Over 70% would like to see abortions contained to the first trimester or less, but if this vote happens any time, <laughs> This vote, the, when this vote happens, we're going to get slaughtered, absolutely slaughtered. Now, the only piece of good news is that this is the first cut that's on the ballot, and we have another a second time. But, you know, I am praying for a miracle, and that miracle begins with each and every one of you, that I need you to be the foot soldiers. You have to be um, educated on this. You have to take the word out to everybody in your, in your network, because... I don't care if you're pro-life or you're pro-choice. I think we all should be pro-woman. And question six is anti-woman, anti-girl. And it's deadly for the nearly born baby.